Earlier this month, along with Senator Patty Murray, I introduced the Be Heard Act. This will be the first comprehensive bill to address workplace assault and harassment. Frankly, this bill's been a long time coming and is way overdue. From Hollywood to Congress, from restaurants to farm workers, to women and men in every type of workplace who have seen harassment and discrimination ignored for too long. Last year, the Me Too movement pulled back the curtain Empowered by the bravery of survivors, issues that used to live in the shadows came to light. And while the conversation started with celebrities, the voices of survivors have echoed in every single industry and workplace across every single state. According to the EEOC, there are some sobering statistics. At least 25% of women experience sexual harassment at their workplace. 75% of women who experience harassment are retaliated against when they report it. And somewhere close to 90% of employees who experience harassment do not file a formal complaint. Almost a year ago, I was here in Boston standing in solidarity with Rosa Morban, a subcontract worker at Logan Airport. Rosa endured horrific harassment in her workplace. Her supervisor exposed himself to her, routinely touched her, and ultimately fired her for, in retaliation for reporting his behavior. Her bravery was unmatched by the power of the employer and unprotected by our current system of laws. We say no more. No more silence, no more acceptance, no more complicity. The Be Heard Act puts the dignity of workers ahead of the rights of perpetrators and sends a sim simple, clear message. No matter your race, income, or job, you have a right to be safe at your job. Our bill will work to make uh, workplaces safer by prohibiting mandatory arbitration and pre-dispute non-disclosure agreements, by extending the statute of limitations for harassment claims, by eliminating the difference in the minimum wage between tipped and hourly workers, and requiring workplaces to create harassment prevention strategies. We are building on the courage of the people who have come forward by putting long overdue protections and accountability into the law. Everyone deserves to know that the law stands behind them and that dignity and respect in the workplace are rights, not privileges. You deserve to be free from harassment and you deserve to be safe from assault. Everyone deserves common dignity and respect. And to everyone listening, your stories and your rights are important. You're valuable and you matter. And I want to thank everyone who is here and works with this community to make our community safer, to make sure that everybody is heard in our system. And I especially want to thank my colleague and my friend Ayanna Presley for joining me as an original co-sponsor and lead in the House on this legislation. She brings her powerful voice, her powerful commitment to this issue, to equality, uh, to freedom from oppression for everyone, uh, to this fight and to this legislation. And I'm proud to welcome Re Representative Ayanna <laughs> Presley. Nobody's Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Catherine, uh, for your leadership and for your partnership. And um, some of you may be aware that uh, I recently uh, tore my MCL. And so my limbs have been compromised, but uh, not my voice. And uh, I'm very honored to lend my voice uh, in solidarity with this incredible coalition uh, of advocates uh, to um, talk about and more formally roll out our Be Heard Act. Um, and that really is what it's about. It's about our raising our collective voices 
uh, to amplify the lived experiences and the stories and the struggles and the hurt uh, of survivors. I'm very grateful for the elevated consciousness and the renewed commitment to workplace um, harassment and discrimination um, based upon the Me Too movement and Time's Up. But we wanted to put forward something that would be sweeping and inclusive, and it would address um, every worker from Hollywood to Congress to those workers that are too often rendered invisible and that are unseen in their hurt. So I'm so grateful to be here with you today and to be surrounded by the strength and the bravery of the survivors here with us today and countless others who have entered through the doors of Casa Myrna seeking refuge, protection, and safety. Although this is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, um, these good folks do this work every day, 365, and we are grateful for you. Um, doing the work to ensure that um, those are safe from violence, abuse, and harassment, uh, which has become far too common in our households, and our workplaces, and across national headlines. I'm thankful to my sisters in service, Rep. Clark, Rep. Trahan, who couldn't be here with us today, but is a co-sponsor, um, and certainly our, our sister in the Senate, uh, Patty Murray. Uh, this is a bicameral bill, which is also exciting. So we thank you all uh, for joining us today uh, to learn about the Be Heard Act, sweeping legislation that will help protect workers from toxic workplace harassment and discrimination. I wish I could say that um, I was proud to be here today. Uh, instead, honestly, what I am is sober. I am sobered about, by the fact that in 2019, we still need to be making the case for safe and inclusive workplaces. Workplaces where all workers, regardless of their race, gender, sexual orientation, age, and disability, are treated with the dignity and the respect that they deserve because one in four women report being sexually harassed on the job. And while these statistics are chilling, we know that they barely scratch the surface because we know that the majority of workers experiencing harassment and discrimination will not report it. So while I'm sobered, I'm also moved. I am moved by the stories that I've heard from brave workers. I am moved by the brave women of the Boston Fire Department who have had to endure relentless harassment from their management. I am moved by workers like Adriana Cazorla, a domestic worker whose story quite literally keeps me up at night. But I am grateful that I am haunted by what she shared so that I stay uncomfortable and never complacent in this work. During a press conference on Capitol Hill, Adriana shared her harrowing experience of harassment at the hands of her employer who insisted, who demanded that she clean his house naked to provide him assurances that she was not stealing from him. I think of Adriana and the thousands who endure these sorts of indignities simply because they fear retribution and that they'll be in a position where they are unable to provide for their families. And so while I am sobered and my heart aches, I am moved to action and moved to fight to ensure that all workers are protected from the indignities of harassment and discrimination. Our bill, the Be Heard Act, strengthens protections for workers and ensures they have access to the resources they need to seek justice. Our bill expands federal workplace protections to cover workers and small businesses, independent contractors, interns, and volunteers, and clarifies that now a worker can be discriminated against, cannot be discriminated against for their age and sexual orientation. Our bill extends the statute of limitations, increasing the amount of time that workers can file complaints to the EEOC and seek justice, and also eliminates the use of mandatory arbitration and limits the use of non-disclosure agreements to ensure that all workers have their day in court and are not intimidated or forced to remain silent. Our bill would also eliminate the tipped minimum wage equalizing power dynamics that have made restaurant workers significantly more vulnerable to experience sexual harassment. In fact, nearly 90% of women and 70% of men in the restaurant industry report experiencing some sort of sexual harassment in the workplace. This must stop. And although this is not a crime or a violation that discriminates, we know that it is one disproportionately bore by women. And time is up. Enough is enough. 
This no longer needs to be a conflated part of our identity as women, simply something that we accept. People will often say, well, this is just culture. What can we really do to root this out? But culture is just human behavior, and we can disrupt it, and we can change it. Our bill also works to prevent harassment by providing additional resources for small businesses and other employers to proactively end toxic workplace harassment through trainings and requiring strong anti-harassment and discrimination policies. I was sent to Washington to be bold, bold in my advocacy and bold in my legislating. Big ideas for big problems. So I'm proud to have worked on this bill in partnership with my colleagues here today and look forward with all of you to continuing to build momentum behind this until it becomes law. Thank you. And now we'll bring up. I'm Stephanie Brown, the CEO of Casamirna. Welcome to our space. Um, we're an organization working to end dating and domestic violence. Uh, many organizations su uh, support this significant piece of legislation, and Casamirna is happy to add our name to the list. Uh, like domestic violence, harassment and discrimination thrive in the shadows, in secrecy, and in shame. Victims are isolated from supports. They face retaliation when they speak up, or they challenge the person or the systems abusing them. For many survivors of domestic violence, economic security is the only way out of an abusive relationship. Employment, the control over one's finances that comes with it, are often the key to living free of violence and abuse. Most people vulnerable to discrimination and harassment in the workplace are those also most likely to be trapped in an abusive relationship. Those in low-wage jobs who are predominantly people of color. Those for whom English is not their first language. People with disabilities people who are undocumented, LGBTQ plus people, and older people. The Be Heard in the Workplace Act says victims of harassment and to victims of harassment and discrimination that that's not okay. We see you and you are not alone, that you should be heard and that it is safe to speak up, that you will be treated with respect. This legislation affords civil rights protections for all people in the workplace, regardless of the size of the employer or the title or the status of the employee. It demands that all workers should be free from harassment, abuse, and discrimination. Uh, for many years in my youth, starting when I was uh, 14, I was a waitress, a server now. <laughs> um, my on-the-job training did not include education on policies that would protect me from harassment or whom to tell if I was harassed. Instead, the informal orientation my more seasoned colleagues provided me um, included how to deal with sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. they, told, they taught me how to slide away from a man who was touching you. Um, or when they commented on your body, I was taught to laugh and sound flattered um, and shake it off, but not to offend anybody. No one tracked how often it happened. Uh, it happened to all of us. It was part of the workplace. It was our culture. No one should have, ex have to experience that kind of humiliation in their workplace. Um, we should all expect better. Uh, there were no consequences for that behavior. Um, and it's still happening today, it hasn't changed. So with this legislation, there will be consequences for that behavior. At Casa Mirna, we value all identities and we believe everyone should be treated with respect and dignity. We believe every relationship should be safe and healthy, including those in the workplace. So thank you to Congresswomen uh, Presley and Clark for listening to the voices of survivors, advocating on their behalf, and filing this very important piece of legislation. Thank you so much. My name is Katia Santiago Taylor, and I'm here from the Boston Area Rape Crisis Center. Um, our mission is to end sexual violence through healing and social change, and we serve um, the greater Boston. What I can say is that over the last couple of years, we have experienced over a 33% increase of requests of services from survivors of sexual violence coming to us because it's their time to get services. It's their time to speak up. Um, I can also say that I'm so excited that this has been filed um, and that we're going to see it through. We're going to do the push. Um, businesses and organizational leaders must take the issue of sexual harassment seriously and view it as a part of their responsibility to maintaining a safe and work environment. That is why this bill is so important. 
sometimes it takes political leadership to get the message across. To those of you, um, those that say that this kind of change is too difficult, we can tell you that biz businesses and organizations are proactively reaching out to us because they want better tools to creating safe workplaces for their employers, employees, customers, and clients. We have worked with several businesses, including Encore Boston Harbor, Blue Cross Blue Shields, Isaac Miller, and others who are seeking, for, seeking more information on how to address the issue. We created a uh, human resources forum to meet this need. Our HR forum teaches HR executives and other leaders how to assess risk factors for sexual violence in the organization and how to change culture to reduce incidents of harassment and discrimination. Risk factors include such things as organizational norms that can mask sexual violence, rigid gender or other stereotypes, a tolerance for harassment and violence, such as ignoring complaints about harassment and lack of oversight supervision in high risk areas like bathrooms, elevators, stairwells, parking lots. To change the work course, workplace culture, HR and other hiring managers should discuss sexual harassment and next assault during their hiring process. This conveys to all employees that the organization is serious about working to prevent sexual harassment and abuse as part of the efforts to create safe workplaces for their employees, customers, and clients. I also want to say on a personal note, as a Latina woman, English is my second language, and when I first started working in the field of domestic and sexual violence, most of the work I did was Spanish-speaking populations, Spanish-speaking domestic survivors. And I have heard for, from so many survivors, Latina women, that have consistently experienced harassment and sexual violence at their workplace. So this is going to help my people and I could not be more proud for the two of you for doing this and for leading the charge because we need it. Um, now I want to work on Rosanna that she will... Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Roxanne Rivera, and I'm vice president of uh, 32BJ. It's the Service Employees International Union. We're a union of 175,000 uh, janitors, security officers, and airport workers up and up and down the East Coast, including 20,000 throughout Boston and Massachusetts. And I'm proud to be here with Congresswoman Clark and Representative Presley, and all of you standing in support of the Be Heard Act. This legislation is crucial, crucial to the working people I represent and to all, our, all of our communities. Uh, we need to put an end to workplace harassment and discri discrimination once and for all. The workers that are represented by our union know all too well about the prevalence of sexual harassment in the workplace. They have lived it as women, as immigrants, as black and brown people, as low wage workers. We know that sexual harassment disproportion disproportionately affects women and people of color. The repercussions for reporting too can be harsh. That workers look at face uh, look at losing their jobs or having to continue seeing their offenders daily. Uh, the members represented by our union are part of an invisible workforce. They clean and guard our office buildings and public institutions largely at night alone um, while the rest of us sleep. Um, and it doesn't take too much imagination to see how this would leave them vulnerable to abuse and harassment. Uh, our members know, too, how little power non-union workers who make up the majority of our workforces have to fight against victimization. We've seen time and time again in our organizing campaigns how easily non-union workers can be victimized and how little power they have to fight back. Uh, this is why we continue to work hard to ensure that our members and all workers are better protected. We have worked hard to educate our organizing teams on how to handle reports of sexual harassment. Um, we continue to work uh, with our industries to institute um, best practices and legal processes for handling harassment issues. Uh, and we've encountered workplaces where sexual harassment, and when we've encountered 
workplaces where sexual harassment is rampant. We've worked with our elected leaders to bring this to light, as we did at Logan Airport, while where we are still working to organize those workers facing the various forms of the mistreatment. Um, but we still need to do more, and that's why we're backing the Be Heard Act and similar legislation throughout our country. No matter, no worker, no matter her race, income level, sexual orientation, or gender representation should have to live in fear while trying to make a living. Um, so we're happy to be here today, and thank you. Now we have time for a couple of questions on the Be Heard legislation. Yes. I'll go first. Um, can you speak to how this um, act or legislation would um, apply to members of Congress? Um, it wasn't there already an attempt to you know, passed legislation last year. I just don't know what the status of it is and if this bill does anything to protect um, congressional staffers or how does it impact uh, members of Congress? Uh, well, we did pass legislation did. Okay. specifically addressing members okay. of Congress. I think one of the interesting things, and I should let you speak to this about this legislation that could impact Congress and other workplaces is that it also extends coverage to interns. Okay. So that's a, an important sure. piece. And, and, that, and that's what's different. That. And so when we talk about um, how exciting it is to um, you know, see a more inclusive and representative um, government in terms of who's elected, you know, one of the ways that we continue to keep that going to reach broader um, parity goals, which are value and also better serve the people we represent, um, is to create that pipeline. And so, you know, two of the ways that I think we're getting at that is that this is the first time ever in the history of Congress that uh, interns are getting paid and getting paid a living wage. So that's one way we eliminate um, what has been a barrier to people being a part of the process. And then certainly by ensuring that the environment is one that is safe. Um, and, uh, and that if you are an intern, um, that you have the same uh, avenues of, of recourse, the same protections, and, um, you know, God forbid something does happen, that you have the same avenues of recourse to get uh, the healing and the justice that you deserve. But changing our internal process on how we handle complaints within Congress, this, of course, would also apply to us as a workplace. And I should add that for the interns, it's not just for Congress. This is for all governments, so city, state, and federal. Thank you. Yeah. Hey there. Can you tell us a bit more about what kind of reception you're getting for this and how it's being received by uh, businesses, particularly the potential changes to the tipped wage, um, the tipped minimum wage? Well, I mean, we're, we're early in the rollout uh, yeah. of this legislation, and so that's why we're here at Casa Myrna, and we thank them again for the work they do every day, but also for uh, giving us the opportunity to talk with them more, to solicit and to get their critical input and feedback, and we'll continue to do that. This is a two-way conversation. It's not just about us rolling out what the bill, it, bill is. It's also to get, to get feedback from people um, on the issue. Um, you know, thus far, the response has been very positive. Um, I think if people are ever skeptical or cynical about anything in this sort of space. It's just about implementation and enforcement. And the scope of the problem is so big and so pervasive. And again, this is culture, so how do we really address this? But the response, um, you know, based on our early uh, rollout here has been uh, favorable and positive. And we'll be having conversations, um, more intimate roundtables with every worker um, group that we cite in this legislation. So domestic workers, farm workers, tipped workers, um, interns. Uh, so to continue to, to, to get their feedback and to make sure they understand what we're, what we're proposing. But I, I would just say that I think there's still a lot of denial you know, across all industry and agency about how pervasive and real this is. Um, and um, we know that it's real. And this is legislation that's been informed based on the stories that we've been told, including from tip workers. And one of the, one of the real um, priorities in this bill is prevention. Uh, we not only want to have the uh, stick if something goes wrong, but we're really interested in the carrot. And one of our uh, focus that we're going to be working with 
restaurants and other small businesses is how can we support those businesses that don't have big HR uh, departments and handbooks uh, coming in and how can we provide resources for them so that this training happens on the first day of employment and we can really work with business um, to make sure they have the tools and resources to have awareness raised within their, their workforce and within their management teams. So we're looking at this as a collaborative effort and a partnership. A partnership, absolutely. And we know that, you know, tipped wages is one of those issues that is going to meet with some opposition, but we, we look forward to the discussion and, and trying to raise the awareness of why uh, that tip wage can be such a, a powerful tool of manipulation and harassment and what we can do to address it. But might I add, this is not abstract. I mean, we are, uh, you know, certainly we strive to be uh, uh, thought leaders and we are policymakers and lawmakers, but we are women. And so, you know, these experiences yeah. are not abstract. These are lived for us as well. And, and both Catherine and I have worked uh, in the hospitality and restaurant industry in our own lives. And so um, these are not only experiences that we are lifting up, that we actively listen to and seek out, but they mirror our own experiences as women in the world. Yeah.